Um, well, uh, good morning from uh, the UK. Good afternoon to those of you um, in uh, Malaysia. Um, we're here today to talk about um, somewhere which doesn't get a lot of focus in Western Europe, um, Labuan, International Business Financial Center. Um, I'm very pleased um, <clears throat> that we have today with us um, Farah. Uh, <clears throat> Farah and I first uh, were in contact, I guess, a little bit over a year ago um, when Farah got in touch with us and say, hey, we've got some ideas about them, um, thinking we might want to do together. Um, and it's been a pleasure to uh, get to know Farah and Labuan over the time. So we're going to hear from Farah today a bit about um, Labuan um, <clears throat> and recent developments there. Um, and as usual, we'll have an opportunity uh, for questions um, at the towards the end of the uh, session. Uh, I'd like to move on to introduce Farah, uh, Chief Executive Officer of Labuan IBFC Inc. Um, Farah, over to you. Really, really looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. And yes, you know, it's been a year since we started to get to know each other. And I think there was a very clear meeting of minds um, when, when we did, uh, which is great. And thank you for the opportunity to really uh, bring some light and shed some light into Lab One um, and, and what we're doing. But before we go there, I just wanted to highlight a little bit about um, who we are at Lab One IBFC Incorporated. So we're the non-commercial market development entity um, for the jurisdiction, Labuan International Business and Financial Center. Um, we've been around about 12 years now. We started in 2008 as an independent entity. Um, and I guess we've developed with the jurisdiction and the jurisdiction has been in existence for about 30 years. Um, so maybe if we can go through the first slide, um, which talks really about where are we, right? So we are um, part of Malaysia, Borneo Malaysia, really. So Malaysia is divided into Peninsular Malaysia and Borneo Malaysia, and we are an island of Borneo Malaysia. So it's part of Malaysia, um, a federal territory under the federal government of Malaysia, off the, co off the coast of Sabah. Um, we have about 100,000 people in Labuan. Those of you who know history, basically, in World War II, you know that Labuan was a very, very important uh, port of defense. And uh, really what has happened is that we've got a massive uh, FCO uh, cemetery in Labuan uh, commemorating uh, the heroes that, that really uh, fought the war for us. And, um, we, and, 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 and it's, it's always been, actually, uh, a key port of call. Uh, in one way, shape or form. And just a bit of trivia, the word Labuan and the name Labuan actually comes from um, the root Malay word, which is Labuhan. And Labuhan means port. It is Asia's deepest natural port. And uh, with the discovery of oil off the coast of Borneo, it has become a key oil and gas servicing depot. Um, so yeah, we have economic drivers. We have obviously the International Business and Financial Center, which we'll talk about a little bit. Logistics, tourism, oil and gas, retail trading. So key takeaways from this is that we're part of Malaysia. We are essentially uh, one country, two systems, right? Um, the Lab One system, the Lab One financial system, and the onshore Malaysian system. So if you look at Lab One and if you look at the cloud of laws that govern the financial system, kind of hovering over the island, that's the best way of looking at it. Um, and we're obviously strategic loca strategically located. I mean, six hours out of Asia, any main area within Asia. So as I said earlier, we've been around for 30 years. Um, we like to think that, you know, we are your corporate home away from home. Um, and a lot of the questions that I get asked actually is um, why? Why would Malaysia set up a center in IFC or IBC, I, IBFC, um, when you know we, we obviously have an onshore system ourselves? And you know, I'd like to take you back 30 years ago from when Malaysia was growing rapidly. Uh, we are still growing, obviously, but at a more uh, a keener tick, I guess, maybe a, a more consistent uh, level. But 30 years ago, we were growing leaps and bounds. And Malaysian, uh, Malaysian grown companies, homegrown companies, were looking at expanding outside Malaysia. And at the same time, there was this island that uh, needed uh, a boost, as it were, economically. 
and what happened was that the government of Malaysia under the Ministry of Finance decided that they would set up a, a centre which will facilitate Malaysian businesses going out. And that's why Labon's profile over the years has morphed. We've morphed from being a very domestic-centric uh, facilitator of intermediation to a more regional uh, 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 to, to having a more regional role. So we started as an IFC uh, in 1990. Um, it's obviously tax efficient. Um, it's substance enabling, and we like to call ourselves Midshore. And there's a, there's a slide later where, where I, talk, I talk us through this concept of Midshore, as it were, as opposed to offshore, onshore, uh, why Midshore? But really the idea is for us to facilitate business, trading, investments, uh, through financial services, I, you know, I, I was uh, invited once uh, to my nine-year-old's uh, show and tell what do your parents do, and I had to explain offshore centers, uh, midshore centers to a bunch of, you know, I think seven, it was year, year two, I think. Um, and the best way I could describe it was the plumbing of international finance. So really, if you look at it as the intel inside the computer, that's what we do. Um, and we like to think we do it for Asia, not just for Malaysia, but really for Asia and for non-Asians uh, that are looking to have an Asian home. I mean, at the end of the day, we are, uh, you know, COVID aside and this hiccup along the way, we are in, 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 in the Asian century. Asia is the growth engine of the world. And in order to grow, you have to be in Asia. And we like to think that it's important for anyone who is interested in Asia to consider Labuan as a home. So well-balanced legal and regulatory framework, proportionality. I think one of the key things is that because we're a wholesale center, we're able to take a very proportionate role in a proportional stance in how we intermediate, right? So we have robust governing legislations passed by the Malaysian government, passed by the Malaysian parliament, administered, uh, and, and administered by the Labuan Financial Services Authority, a statutory body that is under the Ministry of Finance of Malaysia. So if you look at it, what you have is a jurisdiction that reports directly to the Ministry of Finance of Malaysia. Um, and um, and, and this, this statutory body executes uh, its role within the acts that are passed by the Malaysian Parliament. All provisions are perpetual in nature and not time bound, right? For as long as the acts remain acts, uh, passed by the Malaysian parliament, they will be enforceable. And the reason I like to highlight this is because a lot of other jurisdictions are seen as SEZs. They are special economic zones and they sometimes can be time bound. Um, so for us, we're not time bound. For, for as long as the acts remain legal, we, uh, the, the center remains uh, as it is, yeah? Um, the other thing I'd like to highlight is AMLA, uh, the anti-money laundering provisions and the counter-terrorism financing provisions. There is absolutely no arbitrage between um, the Malaysian onshore uh, regime for anti-money laundering and CFT and Labuan's regime. Yeah, We are tax currency and legally agnostic. So for all intents and purposes, uh, you could trade in sterling, um, and adhere to the British and adhere to British law uh, or the law of any country for as long as contracting parties agree, and they will be uh, they they will be honoured in Lab One. So really, what you have is a very agnostic jurisdiction. You have an agnostic jurisdiction and a facilitative jurisdiction in a well-regulated. Um, environment and, and I really like to highlight this aspect it's it's extremely important in the sense that in a lot of instances what we have and, and, and how we try to explain it is that there is a natural tension between as a jurisdiction what we'd like to do and what um, the Malaysian Ministry of Finance and the peer reviews and uh, the standard uh, the standard setting bodies will allow us to. Because we're part of Malaysia, we need to adhere to the rules that Malaysia has adhered to. So really how, um, how we like to think we compete is through our facilitative nature, our regular uh, regulatory stance, and the fact that we allow uh, 
a wide range of structures and solutions. And maybe we, I, I can explain that a little bit better with the next slide. Um, the next slide details actually the acts. So here you have how we are internationally recognized. So we are whitelisted by EU. We are largely compliant by the OECD. Uh, we've been assessed by the APG, uh, GIIS, uh, the IFSB. So we adhere to all the international standards. Right? We adhere to all the international standards that any jurisdiction, whether it be offshore, onshore, any jurisdiction, any financial jurisdiction, would adhere to the same standards that Labuan does. Yeah? And in those he hexagons that you have there on the slide, what you have are all the different acts of parliament that actually create the structures, the solutions, the regulatory body, uh, and the supervisory role um, that is required to run a jurisdiction. So you have here the Labuan Financial Services Authority Act, and that really creates the regulator, the Financial Services and Securities Act, that creates all the structures uh, and solutions that we have, everything from banking to insurance to leasing uh, to money broking, everything. And what is unique, obviously, being part of Malaysia is our focus on Islamic financial services as well. So we have the Islamic Financial Services and Securities Act, and that's an omnibus legislation. And we like to think that we're, it's the only omnibus legislation globally that mirrors um, all the provisions of uh, a conventional, uh, the conventional act, yeah? Then we have the Companies Act that really creates the IBCs that we have, uh, the partnerships, the peace the protected cell companies, and then we have your Limited Partnership and Limited Liability Partnership Act, uh, the Business Activity Tax Act. Now that is the, the act that uh, provides for fiscal, the fiscal um, regime uh, that all uh, entities adhere to. We have foundations in Labuan, whether you have it for um, wealth management or whether you have it for other reasons, it's all provided for there. And we have the Trust Act. Um, and again, all legislation is passed by the Malaysian parliament um, and we adhere to international standards. So really, if you look at those act of parliaments, those little hexagons, what it creates is this. It creates the entire ecosystem of structures and solutions that are available uh, for businesses and high net worth individuals to use. So companies, banking, insurance, leasing, trust companies, wealth management, capital markets provisions, digital markets and commodity trading. So I'd like to take us through each and every box um, very quickly. We, have, we don't have very many companies in number one. You know, we don't run into the hundreds and thousands. In fact, we don't even breach 50,000 companies. Um, the setting up of companies has never been a focus for us. Yeah, um, we see the companies as a corporate structure that houses the business that we are after. So at the moment in Labuan, um, we have as of first half, and these are these are numbers I managed to dig out because the, the numbers are still um, not officially available, but I'm happy to share them here with you. Um, we have about 17,000 companies in Labuan at the moment. Yeah, uh, this is as of first half of the of, of 2020. And, and, and that's fine for us. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely fine because the companies are seen as a conduit for business. They are not a business for us, right? So th that's fundamental in the way we're different maybe from, from box standard jurisdictions. Banking, so we have commercial banking, investment banking, and as for the first half of the year, we now have 60 banks in Labuan. Banking has always been a key business for Labuan. Um, it started out, you know, if, if you go back to, to, to how we started in 1990, we started with uh, a lot of Malaysian banks. Malaysian banks were looking to explore ASEAN and they needed uh, uh, agnostic jurisdiction. So we started out uh, housing and being home to a lot of Malaysian banks looking for booking center, uh, looking, uh, using Labuan as a regional booking center. Since then, our profile has changed. And really, if you look at the assets under management, if you look at the loan books um, and the businesses, majority of the uh, majority of business going through the banking system in Labuan is now no longer Malaysian uh, out of the 60 banks. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we're also proud of is um, we licensed last year our first digital bank 
and that is uh, the China Construction Bank. Um, what was interesting is that obviously Malaysia and China have had a very long-standing relationship. Uh, Malaysia was the first ASEAN country to set up diplomatic ties with, ASEAN, uh, with China in 1967. Um, and when uh, China Construction Bank was looking for a regional home outside of China to um, book a lot of their loans as part of the Belt and Road Initiative, they chose Labuan. So Labuan has the balance sheet of China Construction Bank out of Beijing, and um, we're facilitating all the BRI loans and investments into ASEAN via this uh, via this bank. So we're quite proud of that in in the role that we 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 play. Um, having said that, we also have uh conventional banks we have investment banks in labuan and the other thing that's really important for for everyone to understand is that we don't um we only accept uh business or transactions that are already within the banking system right so uh all deposit taking already has to be within the banking system we don't take uh, over-the-counter cash, uh, we adhere to international standards. Um, and so because of that, our banking system has been quite um, sturdy, I guess, quite strong uh, through the years. Insurance. Now, insurance and reinsurance is another key area. We are home to 200, almost 220 license holders. Again, it started out being very Malaysian-centric, but over the last 10 years, we are now uh, very much regional in the kind of risk that we intermediate via Labuan. Um, and this ranges from direct insurance, reinsurance, uh, insurance broking, self-insurance via captive is something that we keep, we seem to, to, to be growing in and, and, and we're happy to facilitate very much, we're very happy to facilitate. Um, again, it's about uh, the structures it's about the legal provisions that, that those acts provide and how we have managed to find our niche uh, within the region. Leasing, again, is, is, is key for Labuan, and these are big ticket uh, items, the, the aircrafts, the engines. Um, we've seen uh, a growth here because of the oil and gas growth as well. So those huge FSOBs, I think they're called, um, and, and, and the rigs. Um, they are all leased via Lab One. Trust companies. Now, trust companies are really company secretaries uh, that offer Lab One. Uh, when I first started working in Lab One for Lab One IBFC in 2008, um, we had 24. Today, we have 62 uh, trust companies or company secretaries. That just goes to show you how we have grown. Um, and um, we would like to think that our, our range uh, of trust companies has increased the the areas that they they provide our channels provide our partners provide the scope the geographic scope has also increased now wealth management we are home to we have had trust so we have special trust pub, purpose trust but we're also home to asia's only found private client foundation and that is something that uh, has grown we're home now to about 200 of these structures uh, from malaysia but also non-malaysian and family offices, private trust companies um, are also available. Capital markets, obviously funds, funds are a big thing in Labuan, uh, fund management, fund administration, and exchanges. We've got three digital exchanges in Labuan, um, and um, we, we are looking forward to see those grow. grow. Um, and that segues nicely to our digital market. So when we say digital, we mean everything DLT. Um, and really the ethos here is very similar to um, our Islamic ethos. We're able to, we, what we've done is we've accepted that actually uh, DLT or digital ledger technology um, is a way of doing business. And so all our licenses are able to be um, applied I guess you are able to apply for a license, a digital license, for as long as there's a conventional legacy license um, already in existence. Uh, what the regulator will look at is um, the business process and the check and balances to ensure that the business is run in, 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 a, in a manner that is, I guess, we are able to supervise and that is robust. Commodity trading is also a key area for us, but that's very much, uh, again, uh, fitted into the oil and gas segment that we're after. So the tax structure, let's talk a little bit about tax. And I think, you know, 
when we uh, talk about tax, it, 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 it would be silly of us not to recognize, I think, the changes. I mean, the phenomenal changes in the last, what, 10 years or so in this area of tax. I mean, tax changes quite slowly. Uh, and But having said that, in the last 10 years, the, the, the change in the philosophy, the idea of equitable tax, uh, the idea of creating substance within a jurisdiction um, is, is, is phenomenal. I mean, I think the, the OECD has just uh, launched a consultation on BEPS 2.0, and so it keeps morphing. Uh, it's ever-changing, but what's important to understand is that our tax structure is extremely simple. So there is a 3% tax on net audited profit, non-trading income attracts no tax, um, and how we are quite unique is that we have very clear and prescribed substance requirements. So what we did, I think, you know, if you throw yourself back maybe a couple of years or so, all the jurisdictions were looking at how um, to adhere to mine and matter substance, economic substance. Um, and what we've done in Labuan together with the Inland Revenue of Malaysia. Now, that's the other thing that I should have maybe mentioned earlier, is that actually there are two competent authorities in Labuan. First is Labuan Financial Services Authority, and they are, you know, obviously the, the regulator for all things Labuan. Um, the other competent authority is the Malaysian Revenue. Now, the Malaysian HRMC, as it were, is the competent authority for all things tax in Labuan, right? So. HRMC Malaysia, Inland Revenue Malaysia, um, and Labuan FSA together with the Ministry of Finance came together. So these tripartites came together and decided that the best way forward for Labuan was to be very clear with regards to what we require vis-a-vis -vis substance. So we have clear prescribed substance requirements based on each license category. Now again, these substance requirements passed by the Malaysian government and signed off as a gazette. So there, 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 there is no uh, ambiguity whatsoever with regards to what's required. And I'll, 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 I'll dive a little bit deeper into that because that's quite different from other jurisdictions, right? The other thing that's interesting is that in certain jurisdictions, it's important to have a, an election. So sometimes what's important is the structure, not the tax. Sometimes what's important is that legally you're able to, to structure a particular uh, business um, in Love One. And really, you're not after to pay, you're not after a preferential tax regime. You would like to pay a higher tax bracket. And that's where the flexibility of Love One kicks in, because you have an option to pay the Malaysian tax rate of 24%. Right? Now, I know that it seems a little bit maybe oxymoronic to think about it, but you'll be surprised at the number of people that take this option, a uh, number of uh, entities that actually prefer to pay a higher tax rate um, at 24%. But that what's important to, to remember, I guess, is that that flexibility is available when and if needed, right? So there's no withholding taxes on dividends, interest, royalty, service fees, lease payment, there's no stamp duty, and the beauty is you have access uh, to the Malaysian Double Taxation Agreement Network. So Malaysia has an extent, as a trading nation and as a very long-standing trading nation, we have about almost 80 double taxation agreements and treaty benefits can be uh, offered uh, to a Labuan company. Okay, so Labuan companies enjoy um, the benefit from the Malaysian DTA network. And if it's important, there is access to reside in Malaysia. And all these provisions are enshrined in the Album Business Activity Tax Act 1990. And really, it's, we don't see um, tax as the thing you would use Labuan for. It is important, no doubt. But in a lot of instances, it's really the structures and the solutions, the proportionality in regulation and the ability to be located within Asia um, and the cost efficiency of that, which attracts a lot of people to love one. So let's talk about substance, right? Um, substance is used in you know, assessing cross-border tax situation that calls into question really the level of operational activity and decision-making process, mine and matter, um, that is conducted within a jurisdiction.
right? So if you say you are using a structure or you have an entity within a jurisdiction, show us. Prove to us that you are in that jurisdiction. Prove to the prove to prove to the revenue that you are in that jurisdiction, right? So the entity is required to demonstrate it has a functional structure within that jurisdiction. And really for us, it's not been a situation where we've had to go from zero to ten. Because really in Love One, you've always always really had to have your board meetings in Love One or in Malaysia, whether it be in Love One or Kuala Lumpur or in you know bank account ideally in Labuan you know so really those were already uh, those requirements were already more or less in place even before these changes but what these changes has have, have brought is a more detailed prescribed nature of substance yeah so aside from mine management and control there's also requirements to have prescribed number of full-time employees and annual operating expenditure in Labuan Right? This, is, this approach has created tax and operational certainty. And I think, you know, in this age that we're in, and I hate to use the C word, um, certainty and clarity and understanding um, really where you are in trying to assess and move forward operationally is worth its weight in gold. And we like to think that that's what we offer. Yeah, Because these requirements are uh, enshrined in a gazette and it is very clearly defined. So for example, a Labuan IBC, a Labuan trading company, a minimum substance requirement is two full-time employees and a minimum spend of Malaysian 50. Now, a minimum spend of Malaysia 50,000 Malaysian ringgits is about 12,000 US dollars, okay? Um, or for a bank or an insurance entity, the minimum requirement uh, for substance is really uh, two full-time to four full-time employees, and the spend is about 100,000 ringgit to 200,000 ringgit. So with this kind of clear requirements in Malaysian ringgit, what you have is um, a very convenient, cost-efficient, clear jurisdiction um, where you are able to then uh, create, you know, because at the end of the day, it's the business is the business. This is, you know, what you have within an IFC is really just to facilitate that business. And you want clarity within that layer of facilitation. And that's really what we are trying to offer. Yeah. Um, we can talk a little bit about substance in the Q&A. So why Labuan IBFC, right? So we are strategically located. Um, we are six hours from Beijing, six hours from Dubai. If you are within that greater Asia region, what you need is a jurisdiction that you can get to. And we like to think that you are able to get to us, yeah, within that six hours. Robust, well-regulated jurisdiction, Again, adhering to international standards and best practices, excuse me. Um, Whitelisted by the EU, um, part of Malaysia, and assessed by the European Union via its assessment of Malaysia. So when um, peer review comes in and where the assessors come in, they assess Malaysia as a whole. And as part of that assessment is their assessment of Love One. So you can imagine that it's so important for us to ensure that we are up to scratch in order not to bring down the Malaysian assessment right? That is key. That is key. So the Labuan regime has been classified as non-harmful by the OECD. Um, it's legislation, legislated by a common law uh, framework. So really, you know, we, we are part of the Commonwealth. Malaysia is part of the Commonwealth. Um, and we're legislated, by, legislated in, a, in, in our legal structure is the common law structure. Um, offers, uh, so we, and we offer a comp comprehensive suite of legislation. So create a bespoke solutions for business and growth. Really, you know, I think th this, this aspect of it cannot be underrated, right? The fact that we're facilitative, the fact that you can come to us as a non-commercial entity and say, listen, Farah, we're thinking of this. How is this going to fit within the jurisdiction? Right. And really, that's the beauty of it as a wholesale center, as a wholesale intermediation center, the ability to sit um, and have a discussion, an open discussion. And then after that, to go forward and discuss it with the regulator vis-a-vis um, -vis the viability of an application that provides comfort. 
right? And 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 that's and and that's what we we like to think how we have been quite unique in our offering. Uh, currency neutrality, as I said earlier, no problem. You can have any currency uh, operate within Lab One. You can have you can adhere to the UK common law. You can adhere to um, any civil law jurisdiction as well. So contractually, um, you can choose um, your legal provisions. You can even also um, arbitrate. You can choose your commercial courts. So, for example, we've had structures that have been um, that have gone to the Singapore Commercial Courts, uh, the, uh, the 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 arbitration center in the Middle East, um, in the UK. Um, so in that sense, really what you're able to do is take our bespoke structure and create a unique uh, operating regime within that bespoke structure in order to fit what you need. Yeah. So tax efficiency, access to Malaysian double taxation agreements, which I mentioned earlier, cost effective, clarity on substance, clarity on tax, um, workforce. Now, I think when you look at Asia, um, when you look at a relatively highly educated workforce that's proficient in English, uh, that's able to speak uh, decent Mandarin, that's able to understand and, and, and basically you have a very high um, level of qualification from get-go, from secondary onwards. Malaysia is one of those few countries where you are able to hire well. Yeah, and in Labuan, we actually have a university that feed that that feeds into the IFC. So we have a, an offshore syllabus that we offer. We have obviously accounting um, and business management and an IFC uh, school within within Labuan itself. So you've got that talent pipeline coming in um, into Labuan. So that that's something that's that's quite important. We feel, especially in this area, in in the area of substance. Right. So what permits you're able to live if, if, if you so choose. Um, and Labon companies are recognized for listing as listing vehicles. In fact, Labon foundations are also recognized as listing often vehicles to be listed um, in, 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 in quite a few exchanges. I'm happy to take any questions or have a chat um, with regards to, to how, how, we've, how we've grown and, and, and what is our value prop. Thank you, Mike. Well, uh, thank you so much, Barrett. Um, it's a really, really good uh, tour um, of the um, Lab One landscape. Um, if, <clears throat> maybe we should have some pictures up on the website as well of what Lab One actually looks like. Um, which is quite, it is quite pretty. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some of the photos. It is a very lovely place. Um, so we move into uh, time for questions. Um, I've got a question if, uh, for myself, if I may. Um, and I know you managed to avoid mentioning the C word, but I'm going to. Um, just to ask what effect um, the pandemic and COVID-19 has had on Lab One. It's the question I um, get into conversation with with a lot of people across the world at the moment. Um, but it'd be really interested to have your take on how Lab One has fared um, in, in this time of change. Yeah, so it's 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 quite ironic in a way actually because this year is our 30th year and we had so much planned um so many different things we had planned in fact we really wanted to go out into europe this year because we felt that you know um as we as we grow as a jurisdiction and as european uh businesses really quite aggressively start coming out and especially businesses from the uk with brexit start coming out into asia lab one might might, might be an interesting option for them but all, all that obviously has been put on hold we um we have had to rethink our proposition um we have had to come up with regulatory relaxations like all the other jurisdictions have had to um and that's fine but Really, we have been extremely robust in, in, in how we have been able to, to weather this storm. So, you know, we thought that going into uh, the first quarter, we were going to suffer with regards to, to new incorporations and licenses. But, you know, I'm, I'm, we, I, I, dig a bit, I did a bit of digging before our, our webinar today, and actually, it, it, I am surprised. Right. So we've had, let me see now, we've had growth of about, so we have about 
800, 900 licensed entities in Labuan. So this doesn't include your box standard IBCs or partnerships or the rest of it. These are licensed financial entities, yeah? We have about 800, 900 of them. And of this, the first half of this year, we've grown 50%, Mike. Okay, so I think, you know, there's a lot to be said about the pandemic and the deep uh, economic slowdown that we're all experiencing. But having said that, I think a lot of it is also forward planning and historical uh, pipeline, mm -hmm. right? So I think historically, so we've had pipeline coming on board. This is not, you know, and I keep telling, I, I keep saying this to the team as well. We're not selling shampoo. This is not FMCG. A lot of what we're seeing here is uh, are this, uh, based on decisions that were probably made in the third quarter, fourth quarter last year, and have you know flown through, uh, flowed through into first half this year. Um, but having said that, I don't want to dilute the fact that actually a lot of it, some of it, is also based on future planning, right? So having grown, so we have licensed and we've approved about 50 new licenses, 50, 60 new licenses in the first half of this year. And we have the same number in the pipeline. So that, that's quite phenomenal. Well, key areas are insurance. So we had six new banks licensed this year, yeah. 11, 12 new insurance entities licensed this year. Um, leasing has grown. We've also grown, you know, with the ethos that we 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 have with vis-a-vis -vis, uh, digital. We've also grown in that digital space. Um, so, for example, we've got uh, crypto exchanges. We've got digital ex uh, asset exchanges. Um, but with regards to box standard IBCs, we have had uh, uh, a decline. Right. Okay. So those 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 are more, um, I guess, uh, seasonal, as it were, if there's such a word, uh, seasonal. And so we've we've seen a decline there. But with regards to licenses uh, approved, we've seen a phenom we've we've seen decent growth. Um, and in wealth management, we've seen a decent growth as well. So we've, we've had growth in foundations and PTCs. Um, so COVID has been challenging. Um, I kid you not, it's been very challenging for all of us, right? Uh, and continues to be challenging. I mean, I think, you know, we were discussing this earlier about how we're coming into the end of the year. Um, and maybe a lot of us, I know I myself was thinking that maybe, you know, we'll, we'll come to a landing. Um, I think psychologically, we're all really trying to accept that we may not come to a landing at the end of the year um, and, and moving forward, what it's going to look like. But so far, so good. Um, and we hope for growth. We don't hope for stellar growth, but as long as there gro there's growth and there is recognition of the jurisdiction as being robust and strong, um, we'll be very pleased, Mike. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got a few questions coming through. Um, Bob McDowell, who's in the Channel Islands, has asked about um, skills, um, saying with Lab One with a population of 100,000, you know, how do you import the skills you need to support the facilitation of offshore midshore business? And so you yeah. mentioned the the, um, you know, the, 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 the the training that you do through universities actually in Lab One, um, but what, what's the mix of people coming into Lab One to work? So most of them, so it, 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 most of them are Malaysians, most of them are not Lab One Knights, as it were. So what's, there, there, there are two aspects to, 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 to this answer, actually. First is the fact that Lab One is an island of Borneo, right? And there is, there is on a 20-minute flight from there, this uh, beautiful, more beautiful than what I have to say sometimes, Kota Kinabalu. And there is a huge population there. And a lot of them come from Kota Kinabalu. So a lot of the skills that we need come from Kota Kinabalu. A lot of it comes from KL. Having said that, there is also the, the, the opportunity to have your staff in Kuala Lumpur. So the insurance, for example, the insurance industry has this, um, has this allowance where they are able to be co-located um, in Labuan and in Kuala Lumpur. So you have to be in Labuan. The substance has to be in Labuan. 
you have to show that mind and matter management, mind matter, all in Labon. But you can also then be located anywhere in Malaysia. And I think that's the beauty of it, right? So when you look at Labuan as an offering, you need to look at it as a Malaysian offering. And when I say Malaysia, the greater Malaysia. So you could, for all instance, and for all intents and purposes, be in Penang, be you know in Langkawi, have a Labuan entity, have a Labuan presence, yes. Make your decisions in Labuan, but live in Malaysia, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think you cannot underestimate um, the benefit of that. So yes, skills, we have to bring in skills, but we have, we have, I guess, uh, uh, the back, the, how do you say, the, we, we have the manpower within Malaysia, right? The greater Malaysia to bring it in. Yep, that's, right. <clears throat> that's very clear. And, uh... I think it's part of being a midshore centre. It's actually sort of that that that, that uh, link into the main economy. Um, Absolutely. Question from Adrian Gutter: You say, is there a minim minimum investment required to set up a company uh, with live within the one? We've already talked about the substance requirements, but is there a minimum investment requirement? The minimum investment investment requirement would depend on the business plan. So, if Adrian's talking about a box standard company and IDC it would depend on what that company would be doing. So, you know, it requires a business plan. As I say, again, this is about being mid -short. This is, so for example, right, box standard, um, I shouldn't say that, but by and large, I'm trying to, by and large, offshore companies, you're able to buy off the shelf offshore companies, right? You're not able to do that in Longbon. Mm -hmm. You have to go to your company secretary with a business plan um, and idea of what that company is going to operate in, how that company is going to operate, what is going to be um, the key areas of growth. And based on that, then you put the capital in, whether it be authorized or paid up, and then you put it in. So it's not as simple as, I guess, other offshore centers. And, um, and, and we used to, we used to, it used to be, actually, to be honest with you, a big disadvantage. A loved one company used to not be able to sell because it would, number one, be too cumbersome. Number two, be too expensive because it's cumbersome. But with the leveling of the playing field, with this flight to quality um, within jurisdictions, what we've seen is um, there is a natural landing for a loved one offering. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got a, a, a really direct question from Mark Abel about um, you know, working in Labuan. Uh, he's actually planned to set up a, a corporate treasury company uh, in Labuan. Um, okay. Has, has a, an incorporation consultant in uh, Malaysia advising it's not possible to open a company bank account that has internet banking. Um, this may be, may be a very detailed question, but the real the, no. the, the heart of the question is, is, is it true that internet banking isn't available in Labuan? Um, yeah, you know, I, I think Mark, Mark may, may need to be in touch with you separately to uh, go into the detail. Um, no, I'm, and Mark is absolutely right. Okay? OK, so as until very recently, Internet banking was not available in Labuan because a lot of the banks in Labuan are corporate banks. So mm. a lot of it was already always ever done within the system, within the, the bank to bank system. OK. Mm. Um, I know for a fact that Citibank, HSBC, um, and a couple of other banks has have now introduced online banking. Um, what is also, you know, and, and it's a perennial issue which has gotten worse, if there's such a thing, right? Banking. Opening of bank accounts it was bad before COVID. It's impossible now. And what has happened is that, um, you're able to actually bank outside Labuan after you've exhausted and evidence that you've exhausted all the banks in Labuan. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of Labuan entities that actually use onshore Malaysian banks, but in non-Malaysian ringgit denominated accounts. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they offer internet banking. Okay. Um, okay. If I might, I, I, I might put Mark in touch with you to discuss uh, any particular issues that he has. Yes, please. Um, and, and Mark will make sure that that link's made. Um, we are running short of time and we have a few more questions to, to get through, if that's okay. Yeah. 
Um, a question again from Bob McDowell, to what extent you compete or collaborate with Kuala Lumpur uh, in terms of financial center? Is, you know, what's the relationship? Uh, well, in a lot of, well, this is my personal take. Yeah, let me just caveat that. Um, I would like to think that the Malaysian Ministry of Finance looks at Labuan in, for, for certain developmental areas. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Islamic finance. The world's first sukkah was structured out of Labuan. And then we started this idea of Islamic windows, Islamic banking, Islamic leasing. And then as it grew, what the government did was they took it on shore. Right? So what you have within Labuan, and, and, and it's, it's used quite uh, strategically, I'd like to think, um, is that it's, it's, it's kind of like a test bed to see if it works. And then it gets brought on shore, right? So we don't compete with onshore Malaysia because onshore Malaysia jurisdictionally is limited to Malaysians, right? Um, and Malaysian related entities within the borders as it were. By definition, an IFC is the complete opposite. So we don't compete, we complement, right? We complement Malaysia onshore and mm -hmm. we, we do, and, and, and this, is, this is the thinking, right? And this is why when a lot of people ask me, why would Malaysia have loved one? It doesn't make any sense. It does, you know, because what you, what you have with Labuan is this, this opportunity to develop a USP, a unique selling proposition or a little niche, and then see if it will wash onshore nationally. So no, we don't compete, we complement. Um, and we like to, we, we think that's the natural way of being. Thank you very much. Uh, we really are uh, over time now. Uh, we have um, a question from Ahmed Farrakharapan is about the tax law between holding companies and subsidiaries um, and where the tax on dividend income on the holding company is and whether there's going to be future improvements. Uh, I don't know whether there's a quick answer to that or whether it's more uh, for a conversation between you and Ahmed um, you know, offline as it were. Um, but there's obviously something that, that, that's uh, interesting about dividends uh, for holding companies. Are you aware the flow of through of dividends. The flow through of dividends. Yes, I think uh, it's. I am not a tax expert, and again, you know, I I, I, I dare not answer that question almost um, because it might be held against me. Um, <laughs> but generally, dividends are not taxable as they flow up. Um, I think uh, Farag's question is a little bit more detailed. Uh, and I'm happy, and I, I know Farah very well, and I'm happy to take it offline with him. That, that, that's super. Um, I'll make sure that, that that question is is with you in in, in detail. Um, well, everybody, uh, we've had a fascinating um, insight into Labuan um, and you know, where it's developed, uh, where it's going. Um, and thank you very much indeed, Farah, uh, for giving us your time and your insight.